I put every MVP since LeBron James last won the award in 2013 into LeBron's draft class to see who is the best player in recent NBA history. Would someone overtake LeBron in the GOAT race and steal his MVPs and titles? And immediately, we find ourselves in the 2003 draft, where the league is completely shaken up. LeBron still goes to the Cavs with pick number one, but with pick number two, the Pistons take Kevin Durant. The Nuggets make Russell Westbrook pick number three. Giannis goes four to the Raptors. Jokic five to the Heat. The Clippers get a franchise star with Steph Curry at six. Wade goes to his hometown Bulls at seven. Embiid is taken by the Bucks at eight. Melo joins the Knicks immediately in his career at pick nine. Bosch goes to the Wizards at 10. And James Harden is the last real life MVP chosen at pick number 11 by the Golden State Warriors. Absolute chaos. We will be tracking all of these men and year one shows these changes in a big way. The two players who jump out individually from this draft class immediately are LeBron James and Kevin Durant. Both are named All-Stars as rookies, and it looks like we have a true small forward rivalry on our hands. Both LeBron and KD score career highs of 50 points in year one, although by the end of this season, it is surprisingly Durant who jumps out to a lead as he is named second team All-NBA after averaging over 28 points per game. The Pistons, though, led by Durant, are just a five seed. LeBron James actually gets extremely disrespected here as Russell Westbrook and Nikola Jokic are both third team All-NBAs while LeBron is nothing. Here Here's how all of the rookies looked after year one. And looking at the playoffs, we can see Joel Embiid has helped the Bucks secure the one seed in the East, although they are largely carried at this point in time by the sharpshooting duo of Ray Allen and Michael Red. The Bucks match up against LeBron's Cavs in round one, and again, LeBron is not having the best time. Bring out the brooms, the Bucks sweep this one. Speaking of brooms, Keep them out. The Raptors with Giannis and Vince emerge as a true threat, a three seed, and oh no, I'm just kidding, a victim of a sweep. Ouch. Russell Westbrook has become kind of a darling already in this. Again, he was third team All NBA with career highs of 48 points and 19 assists in separate games in the regular season. And he leads the Nuggets to a four seed where they sweep the Kings in round one, but get taken down by Kobe and Shaq in the second round. As for Steph Curry, his Clippers, who could have drafted Steph number one overall in real life, sneak into the playoffs as the seventh seed, but look to make a run anyway. In game three of the first round, Steph finds himself with the ball down by one and hits a huge go-ahead basket that propels LA to both a game three win and a seven game series win. Harden's Warriors end up falling to Dirk in seven games in round one, which means in round two, the Clippers take on the Mavs and finish them off in six games. Steph has 39 points in the deciding game six, leading to a Western Conference Finals against Kobe and Shaq, where the duo of Kobe and Shaq smack them in a sweep. This means the Lakers are in the finals in the West. Looking at the East, Durant leads his Pistons to a matchup against Embiid and the Bucks, and in game three, we get a close one. When down two headed into the fourth, Kevin Durant comes up with a huge 12 points, and the Pistons take a two to one series lead before they drop the next three games in a row. The Bucks are on to the Eastern Conference Finals, something Joel Embiid has never done in real life, and I wish I could talk about the Eastern Conference Finals being a close series. I really really wish I did not have to say that the Nets demolished the Bucks in five games. None of our rookies make the finals in year one, despite a lot of early success. The Lakers end up winning the 2004 championship, which means we have some work to do before year two begins. It is here, guys, that I want to say I'm very sorry that the all-star giveaway never happened. The sponsor ended up falling through. I couldn't afford the giveaway by myself. And as you could see, there have been no videos posted on this channel at all. So in order to make good and replace that giveaway, I'm going to be giving away these six boxes of NBA cards. All six of those boxes are nice and valuable and the cool thing is now I get to choose six winners I'll be picking those winners on May 17th we are going to be posting every Thursday here from now on I am really sorry about the all-star giveaway I've been doing giveaways for years and I think this is the best way I can make up for it but again super sorry I hope you understand with this giveaway I'm trying my best to make up for a bad situation all you need to do to win one of those six boxes is be subscribed to this channel thank you for understanding so we are moving on to the 2004 offseason which is highlighted by two big moves by the teams we are following the first comes when Dwight Howard a center is taken by the Milwaukee Bucks with the first pick, making Joel Embiid a stretch seven foot two four. Dwight and Joel will be an interesting fit in Milwaukee, as will the addition of real life two-time MVP Steve Nash for the Golden State Warriors. Nash and Harden should be an offensive dynamic duo, although we have to question what kind of defense is that combination capable of? The answer already is none. So with year two, the question remains, who out of our guys can win a title 
first and can someone already take home an MVP in just their second season? We certainly see this new super 2003 draft class take over the all-star game as in the East Durant, LeBron, Jokic, Giannis, Melo, and Wade are all named all-stars while Russ and Steph make the Western Conference all-star team. Our young guys have already kind of become the best draft class in NBA history, no big deal. Although Shaq is still the MVP this season. Dwight Howard wins both rookie of the year and sixth man of the year backing up Embiid. I guess in the mid 2000s NBA, we are not playing Embiid as a stretch for just yet. Interestingly, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant now on different teams, both make first team all NBA in just their second seasons as Wade on the Bulls is second team and Braun and Jokic are third team. Kevin Durant in particular is very impressive. He leads the entire NBA in scoring in year two, although in the playoffs, the Pistons are again bounced right away as the Bucks take them down in round one. In fact, while Embiid is not putting up individual numbers quite yet, Milwaukee is still the gem of the East as the Joker and the Heat fall to the Jason Kidd-led Knicks in six games. And while the Bulls and Wade do advance to round two, Embiid and Milwaukee easily take them down. We're going to put a pause on the Eastern Conference Finals for a second in the second and head to the West. In round one, the eight-seeded Timberwolves shock the world as Russell Westbrook struggles heavily in a first round upset. We're only doing five seasons, so this is a big blow to his legacy. This means that out of our guys, we are pulling for the second-seeded Clippers as Steph Curry is our only man left in the Western Conference. And in game one against the Kings, Steph puts up 42 points with eight three-pointers in a Clippers win. Then in game four, the score is tied with eight seconds left. The Kings have a chance to win, only there is Steph. He gets a steal, he goes all the way. That is a layup to win this game for the Los Angeles Clippers. The Clippers advance, however, none of this matters too much as the Clippers do get taken down by Tim Duncan and the Spurs in round two. The Spurs in the West reach the NBA Finals and it is there where they meet the Milwaukee Bucks. As in the Eastern Conference Finals, Embiid and Bosch battle it out. However, Embiid just has way more help. Ray Allen goes nuclear with a 42 point game four. The Bucks win in five. We have an NBA Finals matchup between San Antonio and Milwaukee. And in game four, Milwaukee trails by six points with only two minutes left before Michael Red and Ray Allen hit back to back threes like they're on the cover of Lethal Weapon. To tie this basketball game, Tim Duncan with only 20 seconds left gets it in the post, goes to work, and connects. A timeout is called. Milwaukee draws up a pick and roll with Embiid who catches it, but he doesn't want it. Instead, he finds an open Michael Red who drains the game winning three. The Bucks take this NBA finals in seven games as Joel Embiid is our first champion, giving him the crown out of every player for now. However, in a shocking twist, Tim Duncan becomes the first losing NBA finals MVP since Jerry West in 1969. Fun fact about that. That was the first finals MVP ever. If the first finals MVP is a losing one. Can't we just pretend like the finals MVP started in 1970 and only give it to winners? That's all I'm saying. The offseason for year two is filled with two major storylines. The Cavaliers are trying so hard to help LeBron James. They add Raymond Felden in the draft and then Zach Randolph in free agency. Randolph in real life would be a huge part of the grit and grind Memphis Grizzlies. So hopefully LeBron can start to keep up with his own draft class. He may be helped by the fact that the Milwaukee Bucks are fumbling. Michael Red, a key key player for this roster. A real life all-star, a real life man who once averaged 26.7 points per game, ends up ditching Milwaukee and signing a huge contract with the Atlanta Hawks, which means the defending champion Bucks have a worse roster for year three. Unfortunate. At this point in time though, for year three, looking at the all-star rosters in the East, we are making up over half the team. Durant, Jokic, LeBron, Giannis, Melo, Wade, and Bosh are all named to the all-star team while Russ and Steph continue to hold it down in the West. This means that out of all of our MVPs, we're just missing Embiid and Harden as all-stars. So Embiid has the team success. Does he still have the crown with no individual success at all? That is for you to decide in the comments as the awards this year tell us a similar story as the all-star game only, we still cannot win the MVP out of our group. Kevin Garnett does take home the MVP in year three. Chris Paul is rookie of the year. LeBron though does win defensive player of the year. So that is our first major award since rookie of the year. The all NBA is dominated by our draft class. Wade, Durant, and Jokic are all named to the first team. Russell Westbrook, Chris Bosh, and LeBron are all on the second team, and James Harden is on the third team All-NBA, despite no All-Star team, which makes Steph Curry, who was on the All-Star team, and who was playing for the top seed in the West, a straight-up snub. Steph was ninth in the NBA in scoring with 26.9 points per game, and second in assists with 9.5. The media, though, is unimpressed. Kevin Durant, again, is first in the NBA in scoring with 32.9 points per 
game. He has been a monster individually. However, the Pistons missed the playoffs. Steph Curry, again, leads the Clippers to the best record in the NBA. And on the Western Conference side of the bracket, both the Clippers and Russell Westbrook's Nuggets go all the way to the Western Conference Finals where we have ourselves a true duel. In game one, Russ is at his best with 32 points, 14 assists, and 11 rebounds. But Steph has a chance to win this game as down two with the ball in his hands. Curry rises up and the shot is good. The Clippers take one. They win the next two to go up 3-0 in this series. However, the Nuggets come storming back winning games four and five when Steph Curry has a 25 point second half to finish the Nuggets off. LA wins game six and they are headed to the NBA Finals. Looking at the East, the duo of Giannis and Vince Carter is very fun on paper as the Raptors are swept by the Bulls and Wade as they just cannot figure it out yet in the playoffs. In the first round, there are the New York Knicks and there the New York Knicks go as they do put up a tough series against the Bucks, but the Bucks prevail in six games. LeBron continues to struggle to get the Cavs going. His first round series against the Wizards comes down to seven games where Bosch goes 0 for 5 in the fourth quarter as LeBron scores eight points with three assists, which means the Cavs win game seven. They advance to round two. There they meet a prime Tracy McGrady led magic and surprisingly Cleveland takes down the top seed and is now just one step away from the NBA finals. Sorry for doubting you, LeBron. Maybe because in the Eastern Conference finals, the Cavaliers do meet the Milwaukee Bucks who absolutely embarrass the Bulls in five games in round two. So we are looking at game one, Bucks versus Cavs and down three late. LeBron calls for a pick and roll, pulls up for a deep three and it is in. He connects. There are only five seconds left in this game. It looks like we're headed to overtime, but after a timeout, Milwaukee does try to find Ray Allen. They can't. Instead, they inbound to Embiid who grabs the ball, trucks his way to the basket, looking for a foul, doesn't get one, instead makes a game winning shot. This ends up being the only close game in the series as bring out the brooms for LeBron. Can we call him King James after he is swept in the Eastern Conference Finals? I will say the media, not me, the media is calling him Janitor James. I'm just saying, this means 2006 NBA Finals, we have two of the players we are following. Steph Curry and the Los Angeles Clippers versus Joel Embiid and the Milwaukee Bucks. And after the Clippers take game one, we go to game two, where with 30 seconds left, Los Angeles is trailing by one when Steph Curry pulls up for a very questionably deep three. I mean, that's a bad, bad shot. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. That's a bad shot. Yells Paul George from an alternate universe. But this bad shot falls. The Bucks need a basket to tie. Ray Allen calls for a pick and roll with Embiid. Embiid looks open, but he ignores him. Rises up for the back-breaking miss. Clippers take this game. Clippers take the NBA Finals in an easy five games as Steph Curry now takes the crown as NBA champion. Who needs an all-NBA selection when you've got the Larry OB in your arms? Looking at our offseason, after year three, we have three notable changes. One, the Pistons get Kevin Durant some help after an embarrassing playoff no-show, and Manu Ginobili joins their roster in free agency. Two, the Bucks officially replace their biggest need at small forward, and they sign Lamar Odom. Milwaukee could be back on top with this move, but they will be fighting the Toronto Raptors as, yes, Toronto makes the biggest move in this scenario so far, convincing superstar Gilbert Arenas to put down the, to not go to the locker room with a, you know, I'm just going to say, they sign superstar Gilbert Arenas, who now gives the a big three of Agent Zero, Vince Carter, and Giannis. Actually, I will say this, Agent Zero? I feel like could have had a better nickname. In year four, every player we are watching is high-stepping their way to glory. All of our MVPs along with LeBron, Melo, Bosch, and Wade are named NBA All-Stars, which means the 2003 draft class is easily the greatest draft class of all time. As for our end of season awards, we have a shocker. Dwight Howard is again sixth man of the year. I guess you could say it's a shocker that he is willing to come off the bench for this long. LeBron is the Defensive player of the year again, so he's at least winning those. But Giannis rises up from no all NBA selections all the way to MVP of the league. Clearly, the Raptors are a much improved team with Agent Zero. We will see how they fare in the playoffs. Maybe Gilbert even earns himself a new nickname. And just like the All Star team, every single player we are following makes the all NBA this year. Wade, Giannis, Durant, and Jokic make up four of the five guys on the first team. Harden rises from no All Stars to second team all NBA. He is joined on that list with Bosch and Mello, then Russ, Steph, LeBron, and Embiid are third team. LeBron, with the Defensive Player of the Years, is still easily the most disappointing player in this scenario so far, I am sorry to say. But can he get his revenge in the playoffs when it matters the most? The answer is no, he cannot. 
Wade and the Bulls eliminate him in round one. Again, media, they're saying janitor James. I don't know. The Eastern Conference at this point is not run by the Cavs. It is run by the Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors. It is the Bucks and the Raptors who meet in the Eastern Conference Finals, where game one finds the addition of Gilbert Arenas as the ultimate difference maker, a true shot maker. Gil scores 52 points as the Raptors annihilate the Bucks in game one. Although we are fast forwarding to game six, where the Raptors are up three to two in the series, and we have a close one. Game tied, 40 seconds left. Giannis takes it in transition and finds himself a basket. Raptors up two. Ray Allen almost pulls up from deep, but instead, this time he finds Joel Embiid, and we have a tie game. Shot clock turned off. Toronto calls a pick and roll, but quickly they swing it to Vince Carter, who attacks the basket and scores to give the Raptors a two-point lead. No timeouts left. The Bucks wind up with a deep Embiid three, and it is... No good. Toronto is in the NBA Finals after a massive turnaround. Who will they meet from the West? Well, out in the West, the Clippers go from NBA champions to second round losers to the Spurs. However, Russ helps the Nuggets demolish their way through the first and second rounds and then meets the Spurs in the Western Conference Finals where he gets demolished himself. We have the Raptors versus Spurs in the 2007 NBA Finals. And in game one, Giannis gets outclassed in every way by a major Tim Duncan 38 point 14 rebound masterpiece san antonio takes a one game lead but the raptors adjust they push it in transition every chance they can and tim duncan simply cannot keep up mvp Giannis explodes for 40 points in game two and then in game three we have a one point spurs lead gilbert again calls for a pick and roll with only seconds remaining agent zero rises up for a shot but he passes out of it to Giannis, who finishes to give the Raptors another win. And surprisingly, this is as close as the Spurs are able to come. As Toronto completes a gentleman's sweep, winning both games four and five with ease, and now it is Giannis who has to hold the ultimate crown. As in this season, he becomes our first MVP while also becoming an NBA champion. Our final offseason gives us only one significant move, but it is a big one. As the Heat with Jokic signed Yao Ming, giving them a confusing round roster and I'll just say it yes that was a pun but we're near the end of the video if you're leaving because of a pun that would be unfortunate please stick around to see what happens also subscribe season five we are feeling alive as we have another year of everyone making the all-star team and another year of everyone taking over the awards Giannis has a chance to finish this off as the ultimate goat of this scenario he is named MVP again back to back like I'm Jordan 96 97 and Dwight Howard has become the best sixth man in NBA history as he wins his third sixth man of the year award. Meanwhile, LeBron has left his mark as he is defensive player of the year again, making him one of the greatest defensive players we have ever seen. However, he fails to make a single all NBA first team in this scenario. That is very surprising. The first team this year gives us Harden, Giannis, Durant, and Jokic. LeBron is on the second team along with Steph, Russ, Bosch, and Embiid. Wade and Mello round out the third team. I'm not sure why Harden is chosen over Steph for the first team. Steph Curry averaged 30.6 points per game, which was fourth in the NBA, and he was first in the league in assists per game with 11.4. So this seems like a snub. The media also, I guess, doesn't value LeBron's defense. Durant was consistently chosen over him for first team, but to be fair, KD did lead the NBA in scoring again with nearly 35 points per game. Also to be fair though, when looking at the playoff picture, where are the Pistons? You don't see them. That's the answer. Any one of our guys can finish off their legacy with a ring and the possible crown of this entire scenario, but that man will not be Nikola Jokic as his heat get taken down by the Bulls in round one. Three first team all NBAs for Jokic is impressive. We'll give him that, but what's more impressive is in Bede's Bucks. They easily take down the Sixers in round one, bring out the brooms on Wade's Bulls in round two, and they will meet the Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals as Toronto sweeps the janitor in the first round. So the Bucks, after taking down the Bulls in round two, do give us a big time final Eastern Conference matchup. And game one is all about Vince Carter versus Ray out. Vince scores 44 and Ray finishes with 38. But in the clutch, the Bucks are down one when they attempt to set a pick and roll up only. There is Giannis stealing the ball and dunking in transition. It's a three point game. And Bede again gets it at the top of the key to tie it. And this time he is 
also off. He cannot come up in the clutch. Toronto takes the series in an easy five games. In the West, James Harden finally leads the Warriors to the playoffs. Where have they been? This relevance is very short-lived, though, as they get bounced in six games to the Timberwolves. The Nuggets they end up falling to Dirk Nowitzki in round two, which means it is the Clippers versus Mavs in the Western Conference Finals, and this one goes to seven. In game seven, the Mavericks trail by five headed into the fourth quarter when Dirk Nowitzki goes off. Steph can only watch as Dirk scores 14 points and LA is down by four with only 34 seconds left when Curry brings it up, puts up a wild shot that connects. It's only a one point game. Dallas runs the clock out as much as they can and the ball goes to Dirk's hands where he fails to score. No timeout is called. Steph takes it all the way to the rim. It's in. The Clippers win the Western Conference Finals in seven. The NBA Finals give us Toronto versus Los Angeles and we are going to look at game three. Giannis has the ball in a tie game late where he isolates, drives to the basket and scores to give the Raptors a two point lead. But here is Steph Curry again. A deep three where Oh no, this one is off. The Clippers in general are off in this series. They lose this game. They lose every game after this. Toronto finishes off a masterful run with a five game NBA Finals win, which means in the 2008 playoffs, they only lose three games total. A remarkable feat as Giannis Antetokounmpo ends up as the unquestioned star of this scenario. And so wrapping up everything here, let's take a look at how all of our seven former MVPs did. And let's add them all to the GOAT race where we are tracking how different players play in each era to find the ultimate GOAT. Giannis was only a two-time first-team All-NBA, but he has to take the crown here as a two-time MVP and a two-time Finals MVP. He also had the most rebounds in one game with 25. Embiid was a champion, and he also tied Giannis with the most rebounds with 25, while also grabbing the most offensive rebounds out of everyone with 13. However, Embiid was only second-team All-NBA once and third-team All-NBA once. A positive is that he did make three first-team All-Defense selections. Jokic did nothing in the playoffs. However, he was a three-time first-team All-NBA star and a two-time third-team All-NBA selection, so his individual success was very impressive. Steph was a champion, but he set no records and was only a one-time second-team All-NBA and one-time third-team All-NBA, which is kind of disappointing. James Harden may have been the worst out of everyone, as he had no playoff success at all and only made one first-team All-NBA, one second-team All-NBA, and one third-team All-NBA. Nothing else was at all impressive, even the beard. In 2024, we are over that beard. I'm just saying. Russell Westbrook led everyone with 22 assists and eight steals in a single game. He also made some form of the All-NBA every single season with one first team selection, two second team, and two third team. And finally, Kevin Durant was the best individual player not to win an MVP, as KD was a four-time first team All-NBA selection, made the second team All-NBA in his first season, and led everyone with 61 points, 21 field goals made, 10 three-pointers made, 24 free throws made, and a surprise eight blocks in one game as we also pop up the screens of LeBron, Melo, Wade, Bosch. Who do you think won this scenario? Make sure to comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and also make sure to subscribe to enter that giveaway and just to be here in general as we are on our grind. We're already close to 10,000 subscribers. We are moving up. I'd love for you to join the channel. So subscribe, turn on post notifications. And if you missed the last video, right here is what if Victor Wembenyama played in Michael Jordan's era. I think you'll really enjoy that video as well. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome and we all know it. Have an awesome day and peace.